From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. You know, we're going to be talking about Christmas. It's just around the corner. And it is very difficult for me to read this first headline to you, friends, because it pertains to Christmas. Plots to attack Christmas events in Europe. Oh, my. They are very much aware about some of the things that are happening over there. And they're very, very cautious, especially in Paris and Brussels. And then going on, Oxford theology students, can you believe this, can now avoid studying Christianity. That's a theological university. And that they're there to study the Bible. Oh, my. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. And the refugees in Europe are fearful that there are terrorists among them. They realize that. They say, oh, my. We're very, very sorry if some terrorists got in here with us, and we're very, very uh, cautious about how we treat them. As I mentioned a moment ago, we're going to be talking about Christmas. And I think one of the first pictures that comes to my mind when I speak about Christmas is the one I want to show you right now. And it is a painting of Mary and Jesus. My, oh, my, son of God, savior of the world. Oh, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to the Virgin Mary. And now, this is why he came. He came to die. He knew why he came. And this is certainly the message that goes along with Christmas as to why the Son of God came. You know, friends, there are people who say, well, we'll celebrate Christmas, uh, but we don't want to think about him being the Son of God or any of the other things. Jack, there are people out there who say that we are worshiping the same Jesus, but they really are not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you the strongest Christmas sermons you've ever heard. And this first week is enemies of the cross of Christ, and that's talking about Islamic fundamentalism. And I'm going to do something that will shock you in a minute. But the next Sunday is the Christian message about Jesus Christ. And Galatians 6, 14 says, God forbid that I should glory in anything except the cross of Christ. So one is for it and one is against it. And I'm going to do something today like never happened before. You have guys like Bill O'Reilly and Hannity and Judge Jeanine, and I thank God that they're taking a stand on Islam. But the problem is, nobody proves it. I'm going to do something so you cannot criticize me or say Vanipi is creating a bunch of lies and fables. No, I'm not. I'm going to put the Quran on the screen, all the surahs. You'll read it for yourself, and then I'm going to quote the word of the living God as to who Jesus really is. Let's get into yes, it, Yes, we want to be very, very accurate. And so we're going to show you why our hearts are so burdened because people say, we have the same Jesus, we have the same God. Well, Prince, do you remember when Jack was in the hospital? I had guests on the program. Dr. Carl Baugh was one of them. As he was driving in from the airport, he said, Rexella, you can't believe what I saw. And we got the billboards that he saw, and I want to show them to you once again. Remember them? Same family, same message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Why? Woo! Going on. Find Jesus in the Quran. Why Islam? Why Islam? Well, I'm sorry. The, the Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. One family, one message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. There you have that once again. They had many, many of these across the country. And here it is in Spanish also. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. Now, Jack, they say that we have the same Jesus. But the Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. They're different. Is that correct? 
The Jesus of Islam is like Muhammad, a prophet, but he is not God. He's not the Son of God. And they say if you say he's the Son of God or you say that he's one of the members of the Trinity, you will burn in hell forever. Now, where do you find that in your Christian Bible? Rexella, yes. let me tell you the honest truth right now. First of all, will you put on the screen where the sirs are found? Oh, yes, Jack. They're very, very clear about what they believe. And I think you're going to be shocked if you have never read this before. The Quran anathemizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is the Son of God. When they do, it is guaranteed that they will go to hell. This can be found in the following surahs. Surahs 4165, 518, 6101, 930, 17, 111, and then surah 1935, 88 through 92, and surah 2391. Now, Jack, that's very, very clear exactly what they believe. They don't believe that anyone should believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They say that they, you'll be cursed if they do. That's very astounding. What, you want to hear this Bible? All you Muslims, listen now. First John 2, 22. Whosoever says that Jesus is not the Son of God is an antichrist. You antichrist run around with your baloney putting down the true Jesus and your enemies of the cross. Now, what does the Bible say? Is he the Son of God or is he not the Son of God? Is he a member of the Trinity or is he not a member of the Trinity? Oh, you'll burn in hell forever if you believe it. No, you won't. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 1 John 5, 7. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Watch for this term Word, because that was the name of Jesus before he came to earth. He was in heaven for business years before he came for that first Christmas to die for for sinners on that cross. Now, let me go a little farther. When you say that Jesus is not the way, and if anyone teaches that he is everything we say he is, that we're liars, are you listening? John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 18, he that believeth on the Son is not condemned. He that believeth not on the Son is condemned already. John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on that wicked sinner who mocks Jesus Christ. I love 1 John 5, 11 through 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. These things have I written unto you to believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know, and not hope so, guess so, think so, know that you have eternal life, and that you might believe on the name of the Son. Now there's one more verse. Listen to what the Apostle Peter predicted in his day in 2 Peter 2 1. Listen, this is dynamite. Wow! What does he say? There were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. And why are they false teachers? Because secretly, privately, they bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies that you guys, Muslims, even denying Jesus who bought them. He died for them, but they deny it. God forgive you. Oh, my, Jack, that's so powerful. And all the word of God. We need to be listening to what God has to say, don't we? Now, you know, up front on this program, I talked about Christmas, how special and holy. You know, it's supposed to be joyful. But look at this headline. I can't believe. If they say they believe in the same Jesus, wow, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda plotting to attack Christmas events in Europe. Now, the American government revealed they have credible information about that. U.S. issues Europe travel alert for holiday season. 
Look at this, the flood tide into Europe. They're so glad to be there. But take a look at this next headline. They're frightened. Refugees in Europe fear terrorists are among them. They say, we're, we're afraid that maybe some got in here with us. Well, countries such as France, Germany, Belgium, and Turkey have been hit by terror attacks in the past year. And the United States government says it remains concerned about future attacks throughout Europe. My, oh, my, they need to be careful. And anti-terror police units deployed on London streets. So how about that one, Jack? The new mayor of England is a Muslim, and he said, fear not. <clears throat> I'm now one of you as a Muslim. Wait a minute. They're now saying that they're marching to the streets. They got their camps where they're training to kill. And this Muslim mayor just said the latest statement, oh, there'll be a few little terroristic things. Don't get frightened. God forgive him. And here's another one that really shocks me, Jack, this next headline. I can't believe it. Take a look at it, if you will, please. Islamic State loyalists, after Ohio State rampage, we ask Allah to shake up America why? With new attacks? My, oh, my, now, you know, they say that they love the same Jesus, but our God says, thou shalt not kill. We need to be believing the same Bible. Well, you know, we're going to go on here, Jack. I've got some powerful headlines I want to address. And a few weeks ago, I read to you a concern of Christianity and Christians because they have in their minds, if they hate Christianity, they're going to take down the crosses. That's their aim around the world. Take a look at this first picture, if you will. The cross in the shadow of the crescent. Now, this is an informed response to Islam's war, war on Christianity. Jack, I'd like for you to read this, if you will. The crucifixion of Jesus. Now. They refer to that and what they think about the crucifixion. Now, you folks that say, oh, we all have the same God. Baloney! I want you to read the Quran right now. It's on the screen. And this is what they teach. They did not kill Jesus Christ, nor did they crucify him. They only thought they did. Surah 4, 157. They said in boast, we killed Christ. Isa, the son of Mary, but they killed him not, nor crucified him. Surah 5, 157. If so, the Jesus of the Quran is an imposter and not God incarnate. He that chooses a religion other than Islam, it will not be accepted from him. Surah 385. It's accepted by the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, Jack, there's an infiltration within our universities now also to put down studying Christianity, even theological institutions, like the one I want you to notice right now, Oxford Theology students can now avoid studying Christianity. Instead, you know what they say? You don't have to study Christianity that much. You can t I'll talk about feminist approaches or Buddhism in space. My, oh my, let's go on. Dr. Youssef grew up in the evangelical church a few generations back, and his church family was part of the Coptic church. Now, of course, they came from Egypt. Going on, this is what he had to say for America today. Decline is not a condition. Decline is a choice. And the decision turns on what you and I decide to do with what? The cross of Christ. Will we stand by it? Will we defend it boldly and unashamedly? Today, before the crosses are gone, we must choose. There's only one rational choice, my friend. There's only one decision for us to make. We must choose the cross of Christ. Well, you know, friends, there's only one way. We must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that the cross is the way to heaven. That's why he came, so that we could have an entrance into heaven. Jack, the cross is the only way, and they want to take the crosses down. 
And when they say Christ didn't die on a cross and Christ wasn't raised, they are calling the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty from millions of years ago, a liar and a blasphemer. That's right. Why? I believe Jesus. The Bible speaks about false Christ and false prophets just before Jesus returns to this earth. Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. And that is Islam from the word go. Why? Did he die on a cross? He said in Psalm 22, 16, they pierced my hands and my feet, the nails driven in to put them on that cross. The Bible goes on to say that Salvation comes through that cross. He made peace through the blood of his cross. Colossians 1.20. We're redeemed, saved with, through the precious blood of Jesus. 1 Peter 1.19. And there is no other way. Do you believe Jesus or not? John 14.6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name, no other name given under heaven by which you must be saved. And that's the precious name of Jesus. And when he returns, he'll be sitting in his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know what it says in Philippians 2.10? At that time, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's every Muslim tongue and every Hindu tongue and every tongue in the world, this book says. And I believe Jesus. Oh, yes, absolutely. We believe Jesus. Isn't it wonderful to know the Word of God teaches the truth? And we need to be listening to the Word of God. And that leads me to our wonderful offer of the week. I love it. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Whoa, it is one of the best offers that we've ever had. Please take a look at the promo. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Van Impey Ministries. Dr. Van Impey has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Van Impey used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Van Epi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. You know why we can accept this totally? Because God inspired these men of old to write. The Holy Spirit came on them. Every question that you have is answered in the Bible. That's where Jack gets all of his information because it's given from the Lord and we can trust the Bible to give us the truth. And there's the 800 number, there's the address. And I will be sending you something that's just wonderful. Jack spent so much time doing this. Complete guide to every prophecy verse. So with your order, I'll I'll enclose this wonderful little booklet. Whoa, every prophecy in the Bible, wow. Friends, can we combine Islamic and Christian faith? We need to love everyone. There are many, many wonderful, sweet people out there that don't know the Lord. We need to love them, and we do. But can we combine every faith? Now, someone that's trying to do that is Rick Warren. Jack talked about him before. Of course, here is his picture, Rick Warren. Now, the reason that we say that we know that he is trying to do this, he signed the Yale Response and the Covenant, and it's signed by over 300 leading Christian scholars. I believe that's over 400 now. I'm going to ask Jack to explain that in just a moment. He signed it. You're going to be shocked and what it says, a common uh, word between us and what that means. Well, take a look at this, if you will, too. We can't combine the two religions because we have two different gods. 
the inference that there is a kinship of mutual beliefs between Muslims, Christians, and Jews is quickly laid to rest by the Quran, which teaches unbelievers, that's what they call us, Jews and Christians, I do not worship what you worship, nor do you worship what I worship. I shall never worship what you worship, nor will you ever worship what I worship. You have your own religion, and I have mine. Surah 109, 1 through 6. So, hey, friends, man, I'm glad you yeah, read that, Rexella. I got a big question, friends. You remember those billboards? We have the same Jesus. How can they say that if that's what the Surah says, Jack? Right. Well, the first commandment of Christianity is Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods. God wouldn't say that if there weren't other gods. And I'm sorry to say that Rick Warren has this book out, The Purpose Driven Church. So the purpose driven church is not to start worshiping another God. I want you to listen. This is the Yale Covenant. I got it in black and white. But the main part of it is you must sign two things to do it. And Rick Warren preached twice for Kabeni, the great Muslim leader. I wonder what he was talking about. Jesus saves? Come on. I'm smarter than that. So are you. Now, in order to get into this, and I checked it over, I got to see 317 names. All of these are Christian ministers from all Protestant denominations, and they all signed both things, and they said, you either sign both statements or you're not in. First, you take the leader's hand and you say, I want you to know I'm sorry that we persecuted you, precious Muslim people, during the Crusades. What? They killed 300 million Christians since then. And that comes from Mark Gabriel, one of their instructors at the great Egyptian university, who now has left it because he's become a Christian. 300 million dead. But even if you sign that, it's not enough. The second thing you must do is say, I now call my God Allah, Rick God help you. And I know you've been a member of the Southern Baptist Convention, and I'm a Baptist like you are, but brother, I'm going to do everything I can to see you get out of our denomination. And I mean it. Now, Rick, you can try to explain this to your church members. Why did you preach twice at the Muslim Convention for Kabani? Now, here is what he teaches about Jesus. We see that the Mukti will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mukti will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. But wait! Blasphemy! And Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mukti, and Islam will be victorious over all religions. God forgive you, Rick and Muhammad Kabani. Well, you know, Jack, there are many, many religions out there, but there's only one way to heaven. And I trust that during this precious time of the year, remembering the birth of the Savior, the Savior of the world, that this will be the time that you realize he came for you. He came for you. He came for me. You know, friends, if you were the only person on earth, would he have come? Yes, because God loves you. He died for you. All you have to do now is to ex open your heart and accept him as your personal savior. Will you please do that? As Jack prays this wonderful prayer, realize who Jesus really is. The Son of God came bear the sins of the world. How wonderful to know that God loved us that much to send his son, and Jesus loved us that much to come. Oh, I trust that as Jack prays, as I mentioned, the prayer of saying, Lord Jesus, right now, during this season of the year, I want to open my heart to you. Jack, will you pray that prayer, please? Oh, I've said the way so often in this message, I don't have to repeat it, but I want to say one thing This moves my heart. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. 
the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of sinners was slain. That includes every Muslim. He died for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Yeah. Thank you for the suffering. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you for crying out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, why have you forsaken me? He did it for you. I don't care what your denomination is now. He loves you. He wants to save you. Just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want you. I've said things against you. Now I regret it because now, for the first time, I see who you really are. Thank you for this preacher who was willing to tell the truth. Jesus, come into my heart now. I receive your shed blood and the cross to wash away every sin. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. What a, as I said, what a wonderful time of the year to open your heart to the Lord. And you know what? The Lord doesn't just want to walk with you at Christmas. He wants to walk with you the rest of your life. Oh, my, write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little book, of First Steps in a New Direction. He wants to be the one to lead you in the right direction. So many of us have sort of gone off on our own and maybe taken drugs and maybe done alcoholism or whatever, but the Lord will lead you in the right direction. First steps in a new direction. Now, friends, I love the wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Oh, and I'm going to be enclosing, as I said in the program, the complete guide to every prophecy verse in the Bible. Jack did an awful lot of work here. So please, uh, write for this, or there's 800 number, and here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it in time for Christmas. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your Prophecy Bible, and what an awesome treasure. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back... To Rex Allen. Thank you so much, Chuck. Oh, please do not put it off. A great, wonderful Christmas gift. And I'll be enclosing the complete guide to every prophecy verse. So make the call. There's the 800 number. I'll look for your order. Friends, I want to leave you with this very, very important message from my heart about one God. There are many ways to worship God, Jehovah, but only one God to worship. Amen. We look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.